Hey everyone, Angus Wong here, and um, tonight it's going to be more of a vlog style video because I have an unexpected clear night and I have nothing prepared. So I'm just going to talk about what I'm going to do tonight. So hopefully you guys like that sort of video. Um, and I feel like, you know, those videos may be more beneficial to beginners because I can actually talk more about my setup and my thoughts for the night versus sort of focusing on one specific item like, oh, I'm going to talk about this guy scope or I'm going to talk about the space cat. Um, so let me know if you guys like this sort of vlog style video. Uh, and if you do, I'll make more of them. All right, um, let's move on to the fun stuff. Uh, but now we can actually talk about what I want to do tonight um, and the sort of hurdle that I have for tonight because despite being a clear night, eh, it may not be the, the most optimal condition um, because in about two hours time, I am going to have a 100% full moon. Well, maybe not quite 100%, but like 95 or 98%, but you know, if you round up, that's 100%. It makes zero difference between 100 to 95%. Uh, but like I said, I haven't had a clear night in so long that I'm going to make this work one way or another. And I believe that I do have a filter that will um, allow me to sort of truck through this evening. Stay tuned. So. There's never really a good reason to image underneath the full moon, like tonight. Except if you're like me, who hasn't been able to set up in the backyard for months. And so I am going to do whatever I need to still get an image tonight. And to help me with that, I'm going to use a uh, narrowband filter for my one-shot color camera. Uh, this is the Opsilon L Extreme. To most people, these are called dual narrowband because they allow two uh, band passes, uh, one in the HA region and the other one in the O3 region. And the reason why I'm picking this one is because the uh, O3 region is at seven nanometers uh, uh, band pass. And that's, you know, reasonably, reasonably narrow to the point where a lot of that moonlight will still be blocked off with just, you know, a little bit sort of coming through. Um, and of course, being a dual narrowband filter, this is gonna be great for a lot of the emission nebulae, which I still haven't decided on yet, but um, I'm gonna decide while I have dinner uh, because I'm hungry and uh, doing astrophotography when you're hungry, it's never a good idea. <laughs> finished polar aligning and uh, now I'm gonna tell the mount to go into a PC mode which I can accomplish through the hand controller um, and so far uh, the night is going pretty smoothly and the skies are still clear um, it's weird I haven't had a night where everything just sort of goes smoothly in a long time I hope I didn't just jinx it 
Okay, so I think I've done everything I need to do to set up the mount and set up the computer. Um, I've done my polar alignment. I've done my one star alignment. Um, people have asked me, uh, how many stars do you need? Um, well, that's really a personal choice because for me, when I do just a one star alignment, um, I'm close enough to any target that I would eventually choose. So I don't see a whole lot of point, uh, a lot of a lot of reasons to uh, do a second star alignment. Of course, the more stars you use, the more accurate your go-to would be. But you know, it, I don't think it matters a whole lot because I'm going to be choosing my own framing anyways. I just need the mount to get close to my object. You know, when I see it on my screen, then I can you know orient it to the way that I like it. So. For me to save some time, I just do a one star alignment. Now, on to tonight's target. Um, like I said, I didn't come with a plan because I didn't know tonight was gonna be clear. Um, but I have to be really careful here. Um, even though I'm using a dual narrow band filter that will help me a ton uh, when it comes to the moon, uh, there's no filter uh, that will help you if your target is right next to the moon. So I need to find something that is sort of far away from the moon if I can. Um, and I'm gonna jump over to Stellarium and I'll show you which one I'm gonna pick. So, um, so right now the moon is over here. I am going to pick the North America and the Pelican Nebula. I'm gonna pick that region. The reason for that is because, well, with my William Optic Space Cat, um, my field of view is uh, wide enough that I believe I can capture both of those uh, objects in the same frame. Um, and I've actually done this before, a year ago. Uh, the picture wasn't all that great, but I love to revisit it. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. And also it, it, it will make more sense tonight because um, it's fairly far away from the moon. Um, like I said, uh, if, you're, if your target is right next to the moon, uh, no amount of filter will help you out. So um, just make sure that if you're gonna image under a full moon, take something that is far away from the moon, as far away as possible. So right now I'm going to tell, uh, tell my PC to tell my mount to slew over to the region where North America would be. Um, and while, oh, oops, sorry. That's kind of screwed up. So um, while this thing slews, I'm gonna talk about why imaging under the, the full moon is really difficult and it's not preferred. But like I said, I'm, I'm kind of desperate, so I'm gonna do it anyways. Um, so the reason why you don't want to image under the full moon, it's obvious, you know, uh, it's, the sky is really bright. You're gonna to have to change your exposure. Uh, most of the time you're gonna to have to shorten your exposure before your image becomes completely white out. Uh, but more importantly, especially if you're choosing to do narrow band imaging, um, the, the moonlight actually uh, will wash out a lot of the bluish, greenish spectrum. Uh, and guess what? O3, oxygen three, is in that bluish green uh, uh, area of the visible spectrum. So I'm hoping that you know by using the L Extreme filter uh, with this seven nanometers uh, bandpass, it's going to block out a lot of the moonlight, but will still allow me to capture a little bit of O3 data if there is any. But that's another reason why you have to choose your target properly when you're doing. Uh, imaging under the full moon because I personally think that if you pick a target with a lot of oxygen 3 data um, it's kind of a lost cause um, so that's why I decided to go with the North America and the Pelican Nebula um, because that region of the night sky it's almost exclusively hydrogen alpha only um, so I don't really have to worry about the moon's interference so yeah so when you're imaging under the full moon, um, you kind of have to be really careful about what target you pick um, and how you're going to do it. 
Okay, so I am about to slew over to the region of the night sky where the Pelican and the North American Nebula would be. Um, and one thing that I'm doing slightly different is, th is because, well, right now, uh, the area of the night sky where the North American Nebula is, it's really close to the meridian. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to slew over there and then about half an hour to then do a meridian flip. So instead, what I'm going to do, uh, and I don't know if you guys do this, but this is something that I've routinely done. Um, I'm going to force my mount to pre-flip it because I'm already so close. Um, I'm also, I, I, I would rather just start the imaging session uh, and not have to pause and then do a flip uh, and then just sort of you know make sure that I'm realigned. I just think that's a lot of hassle. And the fact that I'm so close to the actual meridian flip I'm just going to do it right now. Um, and it's completely fine. It's not going to uh, have any impact to your image. Uh, you can kind of see that right now the telescope is sort of slanted down, but it's really fine. That there's almost no impact on the image uh, or tracking or guiding. So now I've done my meridian flip and I can just image for the rest of the night and not have to worry about you know coming out here making sure that my computer does a flip properly because I'm already done. So some of you may know that I have a dedicated uh, astro camera and you may be wondering well if I have a dedicated astro camera why am I still using my astro modify Canon 60D DSLR? Well that's because I think for the purposes of this channel, I want to make sure that everything that I'm doing and everything I'm showing you is accessible to beginners. And um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to show you a picture and say, oh, look, you can achieve this with beginner's level uh, gear. And then I turn around and show you that, oh, I actually captured this with a dedicated astro camera, which I don't think is um, beginner friendly. Uh, both the user experience and the, uh, the finances of it. So that is why most of the time when you see pictures on this YouTube channel, you're going to be seeing it with a uh, DSLR, just because I think it's, it's more accessible to everybody else. Um, and the whole point of this channel is, is not to show you the best possible picture. Um, no, I, I, I'm hoping to you know, create a channel where I can show you guys what is possible. Uh, not necessarily what is the best, but what is possible. And that's why you will continue to see me use my Canon 60D Astro Modified DSLR. Oh, and you probably, you probably have a hard time seeing this, but I prefer seeing the, um, the histogram from the back of the DSLR. Uh, when I'm using it and I'm really just looking to I'm looking at the peak between 25% uh, and about 33 to even maybe 40% um, and I just find this to be a lot more useful so that's why when I use a DSLR I'm going to use the histogram all right so I'm pretty much all set up and um, hopefully you like, you know, this sort of video where I just sort of vlog and talk about what I'm going to do for the rest of the night. But that right there, um, <laughs> it might as well be the sun. But, <laughs> but that is the moon that I'm dealing with tonight. Um, so hopefully the Optalon L Extreme filter and the fact that I chose a target uh, that is fairly far away from this moon right here will, uh, will help with the image quality. But uh, either way, I'm looking forward to how this turns out. Um, and the, the cool thing about tonight is that I feel like every, any time that I image the uh, North America and the Pelican Nebula, um, and just going back to last year, um, I'm really excited about it because every time I image uh, one of those targets, I know that winter is coming. It's, it's winter is coming and it's around the corner and winter is my favorite time of the year for many reasons but for astrophotography um, it's it's 
it's the time of the year where the, the nights are the longest, the nights are cold. Um, some of my favorite targets are coming up, so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to this transition into uh, the winter targets. And with that, uh, I hope that you will enjoy the final image. Um, hopefully this, this moon right here is not going to ruin it too much, but um, I'll do what I can. And I hope that I will see you guys next time. Uh, until then, I wish you all good health and clear skies. Take care, everybody. And uh, say goodbye to the moon. Gosh, that's really big and bright.